Hello, welcome back to Oliver's Greenhouse. Now, I've come in here this afternoon or this evening. There's no real clear idea of what I'm actually doing. So it's gonna be a bit of a ramble, I expect to be entirely honest. Uh, we're gonna have a look, I've got some orchids that are in flower at the moment, which was worth, well, one orchid in particular, which is definitely worth having a look at. And also I've been posed with a number of questions from you guys. So I'm gonna sort of have a little look at an orchid, have a little bit of a chat about things. It's all, almost gonna be like a mini tour, really. We'll have a look at some of the plants I've acquired recently. Um, and then I'm gonna answer some of those questions as well. There's two in particular. One from Mary D, and one from another guy called Mantis, I think it is, um, regarding Pink Ricklia, and also my Joshua Schizandra, which I've re repotted together, which was, well, we're gonna see how successful that was in a minute. So, uh, so the first thing to do is uh, we better have a look at this orchid, which is in flower. Okay, so some of you will remember, a little while ago, I did an unboxing video. We bought some orchids from a company called Curlin Orchids, uh, and one of the, uh, the orchids we bought was this Bulbophyllum gibbosum. Now this thing has put out loads of flowers, um, or loads of flower spikes, and it's opened up recently today. And uh, it looks really cool. It's really, really unusual. I didn't expect to see sort of a long racing with multiple flowers uh, extending from it. I reckon each flower spike probably has about, I don't know, 25, 30 flowers on it. And they're, they're almost see-through. So I'll pick you guys up, and um, we'll have a bit of a closer look. Okay, so here's the orchid in question. Uh, this is Bulbophyllum gibbosum. I think it's native to places like Thailand and Asia in general, I think, really. But it seems to be quite an easy orchid to grow. I mean, it, it hasn't sulked. It's uh, put on loads of new growth since I've got it. Uh, but it's got these really pale, creamy flowers, um, which are held on these sort of long flower spikes. Let me zoom you guys in. Hold on. There we go. You can see you've got these sort of like long flower spikes with multiple little flowers open on it and they're almost sort of see-through um, and they smell sort of faintly of like grass I suppose in a way if I zoom you guys out you can see there's got to be six flower spikes on it I expect it looks really cool so there's one two three four five six yes yeah, six flower spikes on it if I hold it up to the camera in a fashion whereby you're actually gonna be able to see something Hopefully that's still focused in, so yeah, there you go. Pretty little flowers, born in profusion, very easy to grow. And uh, it smells, a I think it smells a little bit like cut grass or freshly cut grass, so yeah, quite happy with that. It's either, it's funny, isn't it? It's either really happy or it's going to die. That's what I usually find with orchids. So it's either super happy and it's rewarding you with a nice show of flowers or it's uh, imminently about to pop its clogs. Some of you remember the Arides that we were struggling with, well, I was struggling to keep alive. Here he is, here's the little fella. That's what he looks like at the moment. So looking a lot better, a lot sort of happier. Uh, it's gone green again, which was uh, a, a bone, for, because for a little while I was uh, slightly concerned that it had taken on a, too much of a red sort of coloration. Just pan you guys down again so it's in view. And move you back again as well. Whoop, zoom out. All oh, right, we've already zoomed out. See, where would you go for your uh, daily dose of uh, amazing cameramanship? But it's got loads of new, uh, loads of root growth. I'll hold it up to the camera so you guys can see it. So these are all the new roots which have appeared. This guy was sort of growing underneath the pot, so I just picked it up and stuffed it back in. And that's growing through here. Another root here. Um, I was hoping to see a new leaf uh, emerging from the front here or from the top of the uh, top of the orchid, but nothing as of yet, but it is looking a lot healthier. So I'm, I'm quite confident it's not gonna die um, anytime soon. Uh, and we're sort of in the middle of summer here. So the orchid's getting up to the, the orchid, the greenhouse is getting up to 27, 28 degrees on some days. That is a, I've forgotten what it's called, a Psychopsis mariposa, because uh, I've wanted one for a while and uh, this guy was going cheap. So unfortunately it came, the flower spike was broken. So I cut that off and um, eventually at some point it will produce another one. I'm not gonna show all the orchids today because I just, we don't have the sunlight, but there's my uh, vanilla orchid. Apparently these things are super fussy. I had a visitor come around a little while ago and drop off some plants and uh, he was like, oh, well done. He was quite impressed by the orchids, um, by the vanilla orchid, because they're, apparently they're really fussy, like they either grow or they die. 
Um, and this guy seems to grow really well in here. It certainly doesn't give me any problems whatsoever. It's just a variegated variety with the sort of uh, creamy stripes through the leaves and stuff. So quite happy with that. It seems to be growing really well. Now I've used fine grade orchid bark, topped with coarse grade orchid bark, and with the fine grade orchid bark, I've mixed some peat in there because these guys will grow almost sort of semi-terrestrially. So it really retains lots of moisture, and it seems to be very, very, very happy. Okay, so sort of centre of shot over here. Get this guy out of the way for a minute. Oh, my goodness, find somewhere to put it down. I need to start looking into getting some shelving and doing the, sorting out the blooming, what's it called, mounted orchid wall on the end of the greenhouse. So over here, this is my little scaphocephalum selection. So I'm sort of starting a collection on these guys. I find them super easy to grow and I love them because they're weird. So it's scaphocephalum gibbosum, pink clone. This guy's a... Uh, constantly in flower. It's one of the, another real bonus to uh, these little fellas. So this has got, hopefully you got, that'll still focus on that. Very unusual little weird flower on it. So he's constantly in flower and he's got loads of new growth in the top. Considering these are cool growing orchids, I mean, it's getting up to 27 in here on the hottest days. And I've got loads of new, uh, new growth, new flower spikes emerging. They seem to be really happy. I just keep them uber moist and uh, they seem to take off, really. Um, there's uh, Scaphocephalin Octhodes over here. This also, guy's also in flower, but he's put another flower spike at the back here, which it seems to be grow flowering sequentially. It's really weird. Uh, there's another one here. This is uh, Odontochillum, but um, this was looking a bit ratty. It was looking sad for a little while. Um, after I repotted it, but it's starting to put on some new growth now. I can certainly see some new leaves. They sort of come out this sort of like weird creamy colour um, when they emerge. So it looks like it's going to pull through, which is quite good. Uh, over the back we've got, I can't remember the names, I'm so bad at this. Oh, there we go. Right, this is uh, Macrodactylum. That's a mouthful. Uh, and yeah, lots, once again, lots of nice new flower spikes here and here another one here and some new leaves emerging as well so but I don't, they seem to grow really well in the greenhouse I was a bit concerned what I've been slowly doing is moving closer and closer towards Mastervalia um, and Dracula orchids to see whether or not I could pull them off because I'm always really concerned that it gets because it does get warm in this greenhouse um, and when I say 27 I mean it's it's still 70% relative humidity but it really is 27 degrees it's it's cooking in here so um, I have got one hybrid Mastervalia down there. You can see my growing down here, right next to the swamp cooler, uh, where it's nice and cool. There's another little Stellis orchid down here. And um, it seems to grow really well. Well, I sprayed it with neem oil. It ended up getting sort of like some weird, uh, sort of, if you look underneath the bottoms of the leaves, it's got some like weird marks here. It's not a virus. They do sort of rub off with a bit of lukewarm water. They just rub off. I think that's why I sprayed um neem oil on it but it's uh i mean it was like half the size of this when i bought it this is one of the one pound orchids this was and i i think it's mastervelia hertzii but i'm not sure it looks like a hertzii it's the only thing i could find that it looks anything like so um yeah he, if he survives then i may start a little collection get some more uh get some more mastervelia because they've got really weird flowers that i i like a lot you know i like weird stuff so Back over here to the Scaphocephalum orchids. Let's zoom in. There's another one there. Right. That one with the slightly purplish leaves, it came with the leaves that colour. Uh, and the new leaves which have emerged are not that colour. Ergo, I believe I'm not keeping it too bright. So this is Scaphocephalum moroni. Or, yeah, moroni, merinoi, something like that. And uh, it's loads and loads of flower spikes on it. If, whoa, close up anybody? There we go, just focus you guys in a bit. There we go. Right, so this is the little fella here and it's growing on this piece of, piece of cork. And there's loads of flower spikes. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven um, new flower spikes, it's not quite out. I don't know if you're able to see that. There's one nearly out there. Uh, so I'm quite, that's got really, really pretty little flowers. So I'm hoping that guy's going to uh, flower for me soon. I was concerned as to whether or not it was actually going to uh, be kept, be able to keep moist enough in here because it's mounted. 
but on the cork, so, some of the slightly uh, dry, drier loving orchids like my Isabelia here, this guy absolutely loves being kept sort of, you know, he, he likes to spray in the morning and one little spray in the evening and then he'll stay sort of like, you know, semi dry through the day without any problems at all. No issues anyway. So uh, this guy's fine, but I get a bit panicky with a lot of my orchids which don't have any sort of other media. So I like cork mounts, but I like to put a, like a little bit of sphagnum on there just to something that retains the moisture because otherwise the cork just dries out in seconds. It's gone. So that's no good. Okay, so now I'm going to actually get around to answering some of those questions. So Mantis S, you asked, hello, do you have an update on the plants? I really like to see how it grew. And he's talking about the Drosser schizandra that we divided and potted up probably the wrong time of year. Didn't go too well. But what I'll do is I'll grab out what I've got and we'll have a little look together. Okay, so my Drosser schizandra lives down here under the benches. Remember, this guy doesn't like a huge amount of light and it doesn't like a huge amount of heat. So I popped it down here um, with the understanding that um, it'll be a lot happier, sort of out of the way. And um, it's also in one of those, um, I don't know, sort of like germination trough things with the plastic lid on top. So it's very humid. Um, and hopefully, I haven't actually looked, it could be completely dead. This might be Oliver's greenhouse biggest disappointment moment. So I looked before just in case, it looks fine. So what I'll do is I'll pick it up, stick it up on top of the swamp cord and we'll have a look. Okay, so here's the big reveal. I've just turned that fan off so we can hear and see what we're doing. So here it is growing in here. That's some sort of weird mould. Oh, look at that. Ugh, weird hair mould thing. That's growing off what looks like a type of fern. So we'll extract the good sphagnum moss from that and put that back in there. And that can get flung out, Blech, disgusting. So here's the Drosera schizandra. This is the only one that's left, but it's formed a rosette. It's containing multiple plants. So what happened was I potted them up. Two of them went instantly sad, like straight away. I mean, these guys obviously do not appreciate root disturbance whatsoever. I thought it was gonna be okay, uh, but it wasn't at the time. So there he is. And then also another plant has started just down in there. So if I hold it up, you might be able to see that okay. So we've got one plant here and one plant on top. So that's how they're doing. Lesson learned. What would I say about repotting Drosera schizandra? Don't. Simply don't. If you can avoid it, don't do it because they sulk like bilio and then they die. So that's what we've got left. We've gone from two mature plants down to two semi mature plants. Not great. So there you go. There's an update for you, Mantis S. Don't repot them or divide them if at all you can help it. Okay, so on to the next question. You have to excuse the noise of the fan. Air circulation is absolutely key in here, especially as it's nearly 90% relative air humidity. You've got to keep the air moving, otherwise you're going to get mould. I could show you some examples of where a, a little bit of sooty mould has appeared on stuff. There's a little bit on there. Oh, I'll tell you where I can sh I'll show you what. Complete sidetrack. But this is, I think this is a real indicator that you haven't got enough air moving about. So, this is Pluritalis restripioides. And on this key key here, don't worry about the mottling underneath, that's a result of the spraying. See this stuff's rubbing off? Because this came and it had a little bit of um, woolly aphid on it. So I, I immediately went on the attack but see here, I don't know if you can see the roots of that kiki where it's gone a bit dirty, dusty, horrible manky. That's, um, that's uh, sooty mould brought on by a lack of air. This one over here is fine. There's enough air moving around it, but this one here has obviously been hit with the neem really hard and it's gone a bit mouldy. It'll be fine and I'm still gonna snap it off and pot it up because I mean, that, but I've had no more signs of uh, dirty old woolly aphid. I hate those things, they're disgusting. I had an issue with them once. Most orchid growers have at some point. I'll just pop him back over there out of the way. So yeah, air movement, air movement is key. I know you can't see me right now, but I can't stress that enough. Right, back to the questions. Okay, so Cindy D, sorry I said your name wrong at the beginning, but uh, I didn't have my phone directly in front of me as a reference. So I hope you don't mind me reading your comment out, but I'm going to anyway. Sorry I didn't watch this video yet. Just wanted to post a question. I have a butterwort that has quadrupled in size and is blooming like mad. 
Can you make a video on when and how to divide pings? It looks like a big brain cluster now instead of a single rose-like succulent, if you will. I'm new to them. You gave me information on what to pop this in, what it took off. Also, I understand they have a rest period, but not quite seeing that through the 10 months I've owned it. Super fun plant. I'd love to hear more about highland and lowland carnivorous plant culture. I hope you have, I have these classifications correct. Well, I'll try and answer that as best I possibly can. Cindy D, I'm not going to make an entire video on how to divide pinguiclias, but what I am going to do is spend the rest of this video showing you how to do it, and it's super easy, okay? Also, another answer to your question is, um, you may not see uh, a succinct rest period or dormancy period in a lot of hybrid um, pinguiclia because they just don't, for seeming they don't form um, the sort of like non-carnivorous succulent leaves in such a way. A lot of mine, which are crosses, just plough on through. They slow down in their growth during winter, but the rest of the time they're just growing constantly and flowering. So they're not particularly fussy. I find them very easy to grow. And you guys should too. Uh, I have got a video somewhere in the 90 plus videos I have on my channel. So trawl through them and uh, make sure you give them all a like. That'd be useful. And uh, in the meantime, what I'll do is I'll turn you guys around because my ping quickly are actually over by the door there. And uh, I'll just tip some out and I'll show you what you need to do. Okay, so here are my, here, here's my very modest pinguiclia collection at the moment. Don't be alarmed about the, uh, the white stuff you can see flaking around on top and all the moss. It's just, it beats, trying to control moss is just almost impossible in this greenhouse. Um, I need like some weed and feed or something. Uh, but the white dusting on here, this is actually crushed up eggshell. Now, many pinguiclia prefer an alkaline substrate and obviously peat coming from a peat bog is extremely acidic. So in order to provide them with uh, a sort of a balance, you should normally sort of, um, you'd normally incorporate something like diatomous earth, which is basically lime, basically. Uh, it comes from limestone, grind up limestone chips into the mix. And what that'll do is that'll help to lower or moderate the pH of the soil. And they're a lot happier with that. But what I've been using, it's just plain old crushed up eggshell. So boil up, make some hard boiled eggs, eat some hard boiled eggs, and then uh, put the shells into a pestle and mortar grind them all up, sprinkle them on the surface of the media, or even better, mix it in when you're repotting, and that's gonna provide, uh, it's gonna reduce the pH ever so slightly, and it's gonna provide some calcium, because these guys really like a bit of calcium. So that's what that is on there. So over here, these were some I just literally just bunged in here, because uh, I didn't have anywhere else to put them. But I'm more than happy to just get these guys out for you. So what I'm gonna do is just tip some of the gravel off like that. Now, they're quite clumping in their nature, but the easiest way to just, because they've got hardly any roots on them at all, I mean, that's not even root there, that's just, they will literally be growing in the top few centimetres of this. What I'll do is I'll hold it up to the camera so you guys, or move you guys in so you can see. I don't have to make too much of a mess. Okay, so here, here is a small clump of Pinguiclia Moctezuma cross uh, gigantia and what we're going to do is just peel off some of the excess media because if you can see it's not actually there are some tiny tiny roots in there but it's not really taking full advantage uh, of the depth of media which has been provided for it now the easiest way to divide these guys because they will grow just little plantlets I'm going to try and very carefully leaving the roots of the plant intact work my way down if you can see what I'm doing down in here. I'm actually just burrowing down some old dead leaves so I can show you what it's gonna look like. They don't really grow along a rhizome or a stem, but they produce little plantlets. So if you pull yours out of the pots and then pull away any of this excess moss, which will be growing underneath, or maybe not if you're very, very good with your culture. Um, I see all these pictures of people with carnivorous plants and amazing, like potting media with no moss or anything at all i'm just like how do you do that i can't do it it's too moist in here everything just grows and then literally you can just separate them from the mother plant just give them a little tug like that and what you get there just pop the main bit down what you've got then is a little tiny perfectly formed pinguiclia like that with its own little root system here you see so it's that easy it's super easy then all you've got to do is get a hold of this little fella like that and have a pot prepared if you're owed, you know, your, your preferred 
potting media. Just make a little hole, make a little hole in the top like that. Try and get the worst of the moss off. It only delay it. It's inevitable. It will be back and in greater numbers. Get out of it like that. Pop him in like that. Without trying to get him too covered in peat mix and just finger the soil in, a bit rude, around the base of the plant like that. There you go. That's how you divide Pingriclia, super easy. Probably want to put a load of sand on top of this or a sphagnum moss and you can just live back over there. So that's how easy it is, it's super, super easy. And if we go back to the original clump here, I mean, this, this, this will not be hard to pull apart and make sort of five or six plants out of. What you gotta do is just get rid of the majority of the soil and then you can just reach in like this and just pull it apart. There's another one there, look. Don't be afraid, they are, as long as your, care and con your conditions are good, you should have reasonable success with these plants. I do not find them fussy. People will grow them in all sorts of stuff. Vermiculite, sphagnum moss. Some people grow them in just normal potting compost, like a bit of, you know, like Levington multi-purpose compost. And apparently they do absolutely fine. In fact, I think they quite like nutrients to be entirely honest. So they're super not fussy. So you can just put them apart, split them up and uh, rustle yourself up, you know, a few more plants all I'm doing is literally breaking that in the middle like that a few more plants for the price of one okay Cindy so thanks very much for your question I hope that clears some things up for you uh, I hope you've enjoyed this brief little look at a few select things around the greenhouse I mean I, I need to do a tour I need to do a proper tour but I also need to have a tidy up in here I've still been so busy doing bits and pieces around the house I just haven't had a chance to really uh, devote my full time to the greenhouse so what I'll do is I'll have a good tidy up in here over the next uh, couple of weeks, get things spick and span, get the plants looking nice, and then we'll do a proper tour. We'll come around and have a look at all the cool things which are going on. All the carnivorous plants have gone completely mental. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I've enjoyed making it. It's been really relaxed. I've had no plans about what I was doing. I've just coming here and talk to you. So hopefully it's not too shoddy. And... Um, Make sure to tune in for another video at some point in the not too distant future. Hopefully I'll get around to making one this weekend. And um, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up like down below. And please, please leave comments in the, in, in the comment section down below. It's what it's for. Um, I'm pretty good at answering. I pretty much answer all the comments on there as well. And also it gives me fresh ideas of, uh, of what to do. What do you guys want to see? Otherwise I run out of ideas. So put your ideas in the comments. Oliver, you weird head freak. Do a video on a repotting Darlingtonia, um, reblooming Brassia. Just ask me some questions. I'll respond to you. And uh, if you come up with a good suggestion and I can easily facilitate it, I'll do a video for you. It's not a problem. Thanks for watching. Okay, so I expect a few of you remember a little while ago, I uh, did an unboxing video. I bought some orchids from Curleen Orchids. Well, this, oh, the missus have just come on. Not sure how the camera's going to fare. So this is one of those orchids that I got from the show. So this is Bulbophyllum, uh, oh my goodness, 